So let's kind of change gears slightly. Um, this is going to be one of my, you know, there's always that one topic on the board. You're like, I can't believe they asked that. I'm voting on this one this time, fat emboli. So fat emboli, I'm going to call it out right now. It's rare. <laughs> you probably never see it. And by definition, it's getting, you know, fat globules in the pulmonary circulation because it's going to present exactly like a what? A pulmonary embolism. Buzzwords for the boards. When do you think about this? If the vignette says long bone fractures, you know what I mean? Especially the femur or pelvic fractures. But not everyone who gets a fat emboli needs to get a fracture. So on the fourth bullet point, I said some cases of trauma, whether you have a fracture or not, just like a bad motor vehicle accident can do it. But the one they like to ask in medicine boards are the non-trauma related. So people who have like a necrotizing pancreatitis, please highlight that. Or they love sickle cell on the boards, don't they? So if someone's having an aplastic crisis, someone's having acute chest syndrome, you know you're going to be infarcting everywhere, including the bone marrow. You could get fat emboli there. So when does it usually present? One to three days after the initial insult. Um, there was always a classic triad that we memorize for fat emboli. It's hypoxia, CNS abnormalities, like mental status changes, and the rash, the petechial rash. But of course, like everything in medicine, less than 50% of people present with the classic triad. So this is truly a diagnosis of exclusion. Now, this third bullet point, I put this here because, you know, it seems like it's really cool to do all these fancy things looking for the fat globules, doing a swan gans and looking for fat, doing a bronch and looking for fat, doing a urine and looking for fat. All these are the wrong answer on the board exams. They really, this is a diagnosis of exclusion. We don't have to do invasive testing to make this diagnosis. And if you do this testing, the yield is slow, so low, it's more risk for the patient to do this testing. So the differential is the same thing that we just talked about. That's why we put it right here. It presents just like a pulmonary embolism because a fat emboli could be like a thrombus. You know, amniotic fluid emboli are catastrophic. You'll never miss it. It's horrible for patients. Tumor emboli, they need to have tumor in the body. Foreign body, they need to talk about, you know, foreign body in the vessel. And of course, air emboli, you got to have a procedure that introduces air to the venous circulation, like doing a central line above the diaphragm. So, but fat emboli is something that I feel is worth mentioning for your boards. Let's close the loop and talk about treatment and prognosis. The only time there is a specific treatment for fat emboli is in the setting of a sickle cell patient, because these patients are, are doing so poorly from a sickle cell standpoint, they need exchange transfusion. But in general, if you have fat emboli, the answer is going to be, you know, hemodynamic stability, give them fluid resuscitation, oxygenation. It's really going to be supportive care. And I put the second to the last bullet point here because I know it's our instinct to give steroids to everyone, <laughs> but there's no steroids is not the answer for fat emboli syndrome. And the good news is my last bullet point. Most people will recover fully within a few days of supportive care.